there's a lot of anxiety about the Mandago issue. Yeah, this NASA um, endorsing Mandago, this issue is causing a lot of anxiety. Yeah, there are a lot of Kenyans who are expecting uh, a headline in the newspaper saying uh, Mandago Nandi votes to go to NASA. They want a confirmation like that. Yeah, like yesterday, NASA guys want that. Okay. On the other hand, Jubilee guys want a headline like NASA uh, uh, Mandago uh, denies any association with NASA. Okay, that's the headline they're waiting for. <laughs> Folks, I'm here to tell you neither of those headlines are coming. You will see neither of those headlines anywhere. You will see you will not see anybody talking about it. Okay, the other problem we have is uh, with our so-called with us analysts. Uh, you know, this is where things like experience come in. This is where things like inside information come in. Yeah. Others, if you're analyzing from Nairobi, and then something like that happens, it leaves you very confused. Okay. So let me unlock some of the mystery because uh, a lot of us are confused. So let me clarify a lot of things so that you understand this Mandago issue clearer, much clearer. Okay. So let's start. Number one. What has happened in Uwasengishu is common in politics, and it's called a backroom deal. Okay? What are backroom deals? Backroom deals are where two political politicians yeah, meet and make a deal yeah, away from the public eye, yeah, to behave in a certain way, to do one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Number two, backroom deals normally go beyond party and tribal lines. That's why they're called backroom deals, because they cannot be done in the open, yeah? either due to uh, 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 the tribal divide or a party divide or something like that. They cannot be done in the open. Okay? Now, for instance, I'll give you a quick tip, and please don't ask me for any more information. There's a deal which has been made in Nairobi between a certain gubernatorial uh, uh, candidate who is born to win the governorship of Nairobi, and uh, a lady from a party that does not belong to his own party, a party, an opposing party to his, bitterly so. Okay, let me just leave it at that. That's an example of a backroom deal. And that is why you will see analysts uh, getting confused because they start analyzing, then they realize, hey, this person did this, that's not normal. They get confused. There were a lot of analysts got confused when NASA, including Rayla himself, endorsed Mandago. Then Mandago did not respond and say, Baba, Kureyoto, Yawanandi, Nanda Kwako. So they're confused because they're waiting for that. <laughs> oh boy. Now let me, let me make it clear. This recording is not for novices. And this recording is not for those people who started uh, following politics yesterday. Yeah? You know the, what I'd call the cheerleaders. Eh? Our team is winning. Is that good for our team? Ah, that's a stack kuskia. This recording is not for those. Yeah? But those who are serious about understanding how politics is played those who are serious about analyzing politics this recording is for you if you're not in that group then i suggest uh, click away from this recording go and listen to something else more to your favor yeah like uh, your, your your side is winning by a landslide according to a certain opinion poll go and listen to those ones that make your heart happy happy yeah and leave uh, the analysis of politics to others okay and remember that analysis of politics does not mean we're always right. No. We just give you facts. This is what is happening on the ground. One, two, three. And we expect this to happen. It will not always happen, but it happens most of the time. So if you're that kind of serious guy, then keep your eyes, uh, keep your ears open. You're going to hear some amazing things in this recording. Okay, so here goes. Let's continue. As I've always said, the Kalenjins are very crafty people. Okay? Now, the first thing I want you to take note of is that there's always been a very close link between Governor Mandago, Bomet Governor Isaac Ruto, yeah? Those two have always been very close, okay? In their political maneuverings, in their political moves, okay? Now, what does that tell you? That explains a lot of things. It explains uh, the reason why the relationship between Mandago and DP Ruto has not been good. How can it be? Yeah? Because you know human nature. My friends are your friends. My enemies are your enemies. You know that kind of thing. Yeah? So it is very important to take note of that link, that connection. Okay? Number two. We know that uh, uh, Governor uh, of Bomet, Isaac Ruto, is also very tight with Gideon Moy. 
Chama Chama Shinani and Kanu are joined at the hip. They've been doing their campaigns together. You've seen that in my previous recordings and so on and so forth. So by extension, what this means is that Mandago, Anna Shida and uh, Isaac Ruto. Na Mandago, Anna Shida and Gideon Moy and vice versa. That is significant. Okay? Especially in terms of what we should expect on August 8th. Okay? Now there's also something else very important you should note and it's a trend which has emerged, I've done a recording before on it, yeah, mostly ignored by a lot of people, which is okay, because as an analyst you don't expect everybody to set up attention when you say something, eh? and also as an analyst you do not expect people to agree with you, yeah, if you're trying to analyze politics so that people agree with you, oh boss, you'll get it wrong all the time, yeah, as an analyst, my primary aim is to get it right. Akuna I don't you don't need to agree with me, yeah? I just want to get it right. Yeah? And normally I'm vindicated. Yeah? I'm vindicated when the election results come in. Okay? So back to what we're discussing. So as a result of those links I've given you, you now also understand why relationship between Kanu and Jubilee has not been good. Yes, I know they have a deal. They're supposed to have a deal, you know, in case uh, Jubilee wins, they share in government and so on and so forth, yeah? But, you will know there have been constant threats, oh, you know, we are not happy with the DP, oh, we know, now you know where that is coming from, okay? Because I've just shown you a very clear link of what is happening, backroom, okay? Now, let's put it all together, okay? Let's put all this, what I've been telling you, uh, in what you might see as parables, let me just put it very clearly in black and white to you. Okay? Now, what Kanu is doing is a perfect political maneuver. Okay? Kanu, if NASA wins, Kanu will still be in play. Okay? If Jubilee wins, Kanu will still be very much in the picture. Okay? Now, we know how Kanu will be in the picture with the Jubilee. That is clear. But how will Kanu be in the picture if NASA wins? Good question. Now I've already told you that uh, Kanu and Chama Chama Shinani are joined at the hip. They are doing the campaigns together. Okay. Now we know that uh, the fifth principle, in this case, Bona Isaac Ruto, is vying for the governorship of Bomete. He wants to be re-elected. Okay. That means if NASA wins the elections. The post which has been reserved for him, he will not take it up. Yeah, he's, there's no way he's going to give up Governor of Bomet. I mean, this this guy, uh, whatever you say about him, is very focused. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what he wants. There's no way he's going to give up Governor of Bomet to go for a higher seat in government. So what is he going to do? They are going to appoint somebody who is actually just going to be a stooge, and that person is going to be a stooge of what? Chama 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 Shinani and Kano. Yeah, so. Both will be both those two parties will be in government because they're together. It's a marriage, yeah. If a husband gets a promotion, the promotion is also to the wife because the, the wife is going to enjoy the extra chums, yeah, extra money, extra salary, ama, yeah, okay. So that is the game Kano is playing. Now I know a lot of you ignore these uh, campaigns on the ground. You have no idea what is happening on the ground. So let me inform you. Kano campaigns have been very low key on presidential support. Okay, uh, they have not been going. When they go to their meetings to campaign for their candidate, they don't finish the meeting by saying, "And remember, Kura raise it too." They don't do that. Now, this is in sharp contrast to campaigns in Central Province. Campaigns in Central Province emphasize a lot on the presidency. They finish campaigning for whoever is governor. You'll give this seat to Orarenka Gete Kwao. My Kiku is terrible. You're giving this seat to who? Yeah. Then they'll go up, up, up until the presidency. Yeah, and then the crowd will respond, we're giving to President Uru Kenyatta and so on and so forth. That's what happens in Central. In Rift Valley, it's very different. There's nothing like that. It's, it's almost as if they're silent on the presidency. Okay? Why is this? I mean, figure that out for yourself. It should be rather obvious. The reason for this is because as a politician, you do not want to cause rifts in the crowd. You do not want to cause problems in the crowd. You want to say things which everybody will agree with, yeah? So when you mention this, the name of a certain presidential candidate and some people in the crowd are opposed against it or to him and some people in the crowd are for him, it will bring, bring problems. So you just avoid it altogether. 
Okay? So that's very clear. I also want to draw your attention to something else. When the uh, uh, DP Ruto goes to anywhere in the Rift Valley nowadays, most places in the Rift Valley nowadays, what kind of response does he get when he starts speaking? Yeah? Now, I don't want to be accused of uh, creating my own stories. Just go over to YouTube, ask your friends, ask anybody, yeah? How the DP is received. Even in Eldoret today, how is he received when he starts making a political speech? It is total animosity. Okay? Now, NASA had a, a rally, major rally in Eldoret. Was there any animosity? No. Okay? Jijazi hapo. Okay? Now, Mandago is a very sharp politician. Yeah? Uh, you'll get his answer, his full lengthy statement, yeah, of what happened in Eldoret uh, um, yesterday. Okay? You will get that full statement when the results of the elections are announced, then you'll know exactly what it is. But let me give you a sneak preview. Right now, from my information on the ground, Mandago is back in play. Okay? Before that meeting, on the ground, Mandago looked shaky. Even despite his links, despite his connections. Okay? But now, what were Meambiwa, what were NASA, are going to vote for Mandago. Okay? Now, one good thing this has happened is that it has removed uh, tribalism from Wasingishu. Yeah? Uh, not removed, that's the wrong word. It has uh, lessened the tensions dramatically in Wasingishu. Dramatically. That's a good thing. Okay? Very good thing. But let us wait for Nane Nane. Yeah? Uh, I understand the results are going to be announced very soon after uh, at least the presidential ones very soon after voting. Uh, uh, by day two, at the latest, we'll know the winner. Okay? Now, as I finish this recording, I don't want to spoil anybody's day, yeah, because I understand a lot of people who listen to these uh, recordings of mine are novices in politics. Yeah? They're choir boys. They just want to hear something good about their side. If there's something which appears negative towards their side, they don't even want to hear it, let alone analyze it and try to understand it. Okay? Because when you analyze and when you understand, you are in a much better position than the person who just wants to hear good news, good news, good news. Because somebody tomorrow somebody will come and cheat you and tell you this has happened, they'll cheat you, this is good news. And because you have no idea of deep analysis, then you'll agree with them that it is good news. Kumbe is the opposite, it's bad news. Yeah. Um, anyway, so let me end this recording with a few things for you to go and think about deeply. Okay? Now we know that every time the DP has gone, most places the Rift Valley, he has received a hostile reception. That one we know. And yet, there are very many people in this channel, very many people on social media, very many other people I meet incidentally in Nairobi, never down there on the ground in Nairobi, who say, votes uh, ya kalenjin wa chana na iyo ni jubilee almost a man. That is what they announce. Okay? And yet we know what is happening. So what they're actually saying, this animosity and this uh, opposition towards the DP will not touch the president's votes. Is that true? Go and think about that deeply. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.